Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the pastor's study. I have a friend whose dad didn't go to church much. His dad had a heart attack, and I said to my friend, well, how's your dad doing? Oh, he's recovered, he's fine. Dad's in church every Sunday now. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, we think he's cramming for finals, meaning getting ready for Judgment Day. <laughs> On this program today, we're going to talk about Judgment Day. Now, in America, does anybody think about Judgment Day anymore? I mean, if you go to Europe and you go to the medieval cathedrals, these 900-year-old buildings, often when you walk under the door, on top of the door is a big statue of the Second Coming with Jesus coming down in the clouds on the throne, the dead being pulled up from their graves, the saved being pulled into heaven, the damned being pulled down into hell. And when you went to church in the Middle Ages, you thought about Judgment Day. I mean, people were dying all over from the plague. And when you went to church, you've got one of two places to go, heaven or hell. We don't think about Judgment Day today. I was riding my bicycle and I saw something I've never seen before. Here's a dog running in this highway, and cars are going like, I don't know if it was a mad dog. I've never seen, and, and finally the dog got off the road. Then he went right back in, and cars are going like this, and then finally the dog took off. But people are like that. People go through this life not having a clue that their behavior is going to have eternal consequences. It's called Judgment Day. So let's talk about Judgment Day. Would you take out your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 25, and let's see what Judgment Day will be like. Let's pray first. Father, we pray for every person watching this program. Some of them are going to heaven, some of them are going to hell. We pray, Lord, you would bring many people to saving faith in Jesus in this hour and speak to us now about Judgment Day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, Jesus said, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. I want you to notice twice the word glory there. Here's the first lesson about Judgment Day. The second coming of Christ will be in glory. Somebody asked me, well, when Jesus comes back at the second coming, where will he be born next time? Will he be born again in Bethlehem? No. Second coming, he does, first coming, he came in humiliation, born in a barn. Second coming, he's coming in power and glory. No mistaking it. There was a weird cult in Puerto Rico and Miami, and thousands of people worshipped a man called Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda, and this man claimed to be the second coming of Christ. He died in 2013. Even bigger was the Reverend Sung Myung Moon, born in 1920 in Korea. People worshipped him as the second coming of Christ. He died in 2012. So beware of false Christ. When Jesus com comes back at the second coming, at the judgment day, you're going to know who he is. He's coming down in glory. Verse 32, and before him will be gathered all the nations. I want you to note the word all there. Next lesson, everyone, all, will be raised and judged. Some people think, some churches teach, that only the Christians will be raised from the dead. No, listen to this from John chapter 5. Jesus said, do not marvel at this. The hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Everybody who has ever lived, Hitler, 
Mussolini, Stalin, you, me, everybody will be raised from the dead. One day there will be justice in this unjust world, and it's called Judgment Day. Verse 32, and he, the king, Jesus, will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Here's the next lesson. Jesus determines your eternal destiny. He determines who's a sheep and who's a goat. So be good to him. <laughs> when people use Jesus Christ as a swear word, I'm thinking, what are you doing? He's the one who will determine where you spend all eternity. You're going to drag his name through the mud? Look at verse 32, 33. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Here's the next lesson. The inheritance is coming, so Christian, hang on. <laughs> You've maybe heard this story. I love this story. There's a story of a millionaire, widower. He only had one child, and he loved this 12-year-old boy. So he hired a famous painter to paint the boy's portrait, hung it over the fireplace in the mansion, and not too long afterwards, the little boy suddenly died. Father was heartbroken. He'd go into the living room and stare at that picture. And not long after that, the father died of a broken heart. But there was no one to leave the inheritance to. So the auction was held. Large crowd shows up to auction off all the property. And the first item that the auctioneer puts on the auction block is the painting of the sun. And he says, well, uh, first item today, famous painter made this. Who would give me $500 for this painting? Nobody. $400. No. $300. Got, got all the way down to $50. Who will give me $50 for this? And the old scrub woman who used to work in the mansion, she loved that little boy too. And she remembered what that painting meant to her employer. And she put up her hand and said, I'll give you $50 for that. And the auctioneer put down the gavel and said, auction is over. The will stipulated, whoever loves my son enough to buy this painting gets the whole estate. <laughs> Listen, if you love the Son of God, one day your inheritance is coming and you get the universe. <laughs> Verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Now, I want you to notice here, the sheep and the goats are separated by what they did, by their actions. So here's the next lesson. Judgment will be according to works. And this is the consistent theme throughout the Bible. God will judge you on the last day by what you did. Now, I'm a Lutheran. What do I do with this? Because Lutherans are big on the fact that we're not saved by our good works. We're only saved by grace, by what Jesus did on the cross. So, and, and the Bible teaches that. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Do, uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not your own doing. It's a gift of God. Not of your good works, lest anyone should boast. But then why does the Bible teach also that we're saved by or we're judged by our works? Does the Bible contradict itself? It doesn't. There's a way to put this together. Follow this, please. <laughs> Are we saved by grace alone? Yes, hallelujah. My only hope on Judgment Day is that Jesus died on, my, on the cross. Grace alone. Um, and you'll notice, too, in this parable of, the, of Judgment Day, the first thing that separates us is not what they did. It's who they were, whether they were a sheep or a goat. God, by His grace, makes you a sheep. But it's also true that grace is not a puny, weak thing. It's a powerful thing. It changes your life. And, and we're saved by grace alone, um, but we're judged by works. The works will show whether we've been saved by grace alone. So if somebody says, well, I'm saved by grace and they're living like the devil, they're a goat. 
You know the old saying, if it looks like a goat, bleats like a goat, smells like a goat, it's a goat. And if somebody says, well, I'm saved by grace, but they're living like the devil, they're a goat. I mean, I knew a lady who, I don't think she went to church at all, but she would tell me, well, you know, I'm saved. I prayed the prayer and asked Jesus in my heart. Well, Jesus will say to people on the last day, depart from me. I never knew you. I mean, uh, your actions, your behavior, they don't save you, but they show whether you've been saved. I, I went to a Calvinist pastor's conference once, and the preacher said this, we are saved by grace alone. Hallelujah. But then he said, grace never is alone. It always changes your life. And yes, we still sin even after conversion, but I'm not what I would be. <laughs> and we're not talking about perfection here. We're talking about direction. Yes, we sin after conversion. We still need the blood of Christ every day of our lives. But has the direction of your life changed? Then you've been saved by grace. It's kind of like me saying, you know, I, I'm telling you, I'm on your high school football team. And you'd say to me, Tom, you're too old, way too old. What do you mean you're in my, you've never stepped foot in my high school. You've never once been to a practice. Co the coach doesn't know you. That's how ridiculous it is for people who say, I'm saved, but they never act like it. All right, let's summarize this. this I know it's kind of a hard concept, so let's just summarize it again. Yes, we're saved by grace alone. Only Christ's death on the cross will save me. But when grace saves me, it does change my life, and that's evidenced in my good works. So here's the big question then. Do you feed the hungry? Do you clothe the naked? Do you visit the imprisoned, the people that are sick and hurting? And if you never do any of that, are you a sheep? Look at verse 37. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit, and, and visit you? Here's the next lesson. The saved unconsciously serve the Lord. It's not like, Lord, I did all this stuff, so I've earned this. You better save me. It's like, I did? When did I feed you? Verse 40, and the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, notice the words, my brothers, you did it to me. Here's the next lesson. When you serve a Christian, you are serving Jesus. If you want to be nice to Jesus, find a Christian who is hurting and be nice to that person. I don't think this verse is teaching that if you feed a lot of hungry people, you're going to go to heaven. Stalin was an atheist. He killed millions of people. Periodically, they would feed people under Stalin. So uh, this is not a generic, just be nice, feed people, be nice, and you're going to go to heaven. No, it says, my brothers. So what I think is really going on in this verse, the way you treat Jesus' brothers, the apostles, the way you respond to their message, you know, they, they suffered and they were starving. But did you treat the apostles well? And their Because the way you treat the apostles and their message is the way you treat Jesus. Here's what one scholar said. D.A. Carson, Jesus' brothers are his disciples. The fate of the nations will be determined by how they respond to the apostles' teaching. They are the ones charged with spreading the gospel, and they do it in the face of hunger, thirst, illness, and imprisonment. Good deeds done to Jesus' followers, even the least of them, are not only works of compassion, but they reflect where people stand in relation to Jesus himself. The question is then, do you accept the apostles' teaching? That would be the Bible. Do you treat the apostles well? <laughs> and if you never do, you've got to ask yourself, if, are you really a sheep? Uh, verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Here's the next lesson. <clears throat> Jesus will send people to hell. So I asked a lady once, when's the last time your pastor preached on hell? My pastor has never preached on hell. Pope Francis said at the beginning of his uh, reign to atheists, just do good and I'll see you there in heaven. 
You can Google this and watch it on YouTube. The Pope is in front of a crowd and people are coming to the microphone to ask him questions. Seven-year-old boy gets to the microphone. Pope Francis, my father was an atheist. He got us all baptized in the church, but he never went to church. He didn't believe in God. He died. Will I see my father again? Pope Francis said, you'll see him again. Your father was a good man. No, according to the Bible, there's a heaven and a hell. And I'll, I'll quote now a gay Lutheran pastor of the liberal ELCA denomination, talking about Judas who betrayed Christ. What the church didn't do for Judas in this life, God will do for Judas in the next. There is no eternal hell. All people will eventually be saved by a loving God who never gives up on his way of wayward children after a time of purgation. In other words, you might have to uh, suffer a little bit, but everybody goes to heaven, not according to this verse. And when people say, my loving Jesus would never send anyone to hell, we got to say back, okay, then could you explain John chapter 25, verse 41, where Jesus says to people, you're going to hell. Verse, and here's why they're going to hell. Verse 42. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then I, he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Here's the next lesson. The way you mistreat the least Christians is the way you treat Jesus. If you remember, Paul is persecuting Christians and Jesus appears to him in a vision and he says, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting the church? No, he says, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? When you persecute Christians, you're persecuting Jesus. Look at verse 46. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here's the last lesson. Heaven and hell are eternal. Eternal punishment, eternal life. Now, Seventh-day Adventists and, and Jehovah's Witnesses are what's called annihilationists. They believe when you die, if you're not a believer, you just get wiped out. Not according to this verse. It's either eternal life or eternal punishment. Read Luke 16. The guy in hell in Luke 16 isn't wiped out. He's in hell begging to get out. Heaven and hell are eternal. Have you ever thought of that? <laughs> I was getting up to preach one Sunday and the sound director at, our, at the church said, Pastor Tom, how long is eternity? I said, well, it's forever. And he said, eternity is this huge mountain made out of solid diamond, the hardest substance on earth. Once every hundred years, a little bird flies by, rubs its beak once on the top of the mountain, flies away. Hundred years later, the bird comes back, rubs its little beak once on the top of the mountain, flies away. Hundred years later, come, and he said, when that huge diamond mountain is worn all the way down to nothing, the first day of eternity has passed. Billy Sunday was a revival preacher in the uh, early, early 1900s, 1920, 1930. And he said, Billy Sunday said, where did I put Billy? <laughs> well, I'll have to wing it. He said, a thousand years times a thousand years times a thousand years times a thousand years is the first day of eternity. Uh, you know, I, I believe if you and I could take an elevator shaft and go down into hell and see it for five minutes and come back up, we would never be the same. Heaven and hell are eternal. I saw a funny car, far side cartoon that wasn't really very funny. There's a long line of people going into the door of hell Satan is standing next to the door smiling and on the top of the door there's a sign. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Huh. 
have you ever heard how the Salvation Army was founded? In 1865, William Booth was in London, and an atheist came up and said, if I believe like you Christians say you believe, that there's an eternal hell, I would crawl on my knees on crushed glass all over London, screaming for people to repent. And that word challenged William Booth, and he founded the Salvation Army. Well, let me close the sermon about Judgment Day by putting the big question before you. How do you treat Jesus' brethren? Do you feed the hungry, clothe the naked? Do you give to missions? Do you help Christians overseas? Do you do things that show you're a sheep? And if you never do things that show you're a sheep, well, you're a goat. Don't be like that dog zipping in and out of traffic. There's going to be a judgment day. Know that now. Your life has eternal consequences. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor's study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, our first question is, will God bring up my sins on judgment day? Jesus did say that hidden things will be revealed on the last day. Some people have an impression that God's going to put my sins up on a movie screen for everybody to see. It doesn't say that. <laughs> so I think if you're sorry for your sins, you repent, they're washed away. And Jesus said they're removed, or the Old Testament says, they are removed as far as the east is from the west. I will remember their sins no more. So if you've repented of things, you're forgiven. Uh, but there may be things that God has to talk to each one of us about. Mm -hmm. And we need to, you know, we all have to go through Judgment Day. Some people think Christians don't go through Judgment Day because Jesus paid our sin debt on the cross, therefore we're saved. Well, we are saved. We still go through Judgment Day. For uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul writing to Christians says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ mm -hmm. to receive according to what each one has done in the body, whether good or bad. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. That's written to Christians. That's to us. Yeah. Are there different degrees of rewards for Christians on Judgment Day? Well, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you might want to read that passage. Paul talks about two people building a house. They both have the foundation of Christ. They're both saved. Mm -hmm. But one builds his house with wood, straw, stubble, junk. Another builds with you know gold, uh, precious jewels. Fire comes, the, the fire of Judgment Day. And uh, to test what each man, the guy, uh, on the on the one side, his whole house burns down. He gets into heaven. It says he himself is saved. Himself is saved, but only is through fire. Like he goes smoking into heaven. Mm -hmm. The other guy, he gets rewards because he lived his life more fully for Christ, and he goes into heavens with with rewards. The other goes guy goes into heaven, but not with the rewards he could have had. So read First Corinthians three. There are varying degrees of reward on Judgment Day. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Does Judgment Day happen when you die or at the end of time? When you die, according to Luke 16, you go to heaven or hell. But there's still going to be a Judgment Day when those rewards, I believe, are determined. The, the Christians in heaven right now also don't have their perfect new resurrection body. Their spirits are in heaven, they're conscious with the Lord, but on the last day too, we get, we get these uh, resurrection bodies for all eternity. So not everything happens when you die. Some of that is waiting till the end. Okay. Will anyone who feeds the hungry and helps people throughout their life go to heaven? I thought you had to believe in Jesus. Yeah. And some people use Matthew 25 to teach that, well, as long as you're nice to people, you go to heaven. That's not what he says. What you do to these, my brothers, he's talking about the apostles and their message, is what term determines eternity. So, uh, yes, you have to believe in Christ to be saved. Because, again, Stalin the atheist fed people. Mm hmm it, he killed millions of people, but sometimes he had a food program. So there you go. Will it be possible to sin in heaven? Can and, you be expelled or Can you kicked be kicked out, out of heaven? You know, sometimes you heaven? hear that. The answer is, uh, again, read Luke chapter 6. When you're in hell, you're in hell forever. You can't get out. When you're in heaven, and you never want out of heaven, mm -hmm. when you're in heaven, you'll never get kicked out because we don't sin up in heaven. Mm -hmm. it, sin is not even a temptation up there because we have our new bodies, creations, etc. Yeah. 
Yeah. Some people b uh, believe in purgatory. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Uh, it's a Catholic teaching that if you die with, with sin on your soul, you go to purgatory maybe for a short time, maybe for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. but that's getting your sins kind of burned, purged off. Okay. Jesus said it is finished on the cross. I don't think I have to go to purgatory and, and uh, do payment, or and they wouldn't say payment, but I, I think when you die, you go to heaven or hell. There's nothing in the Bible about going to a place called purgatory. And the Catholics believe if you go to purgatory, you always end up in heaven. These are Christians that go to purgatory. But again, mm -hmm. the present Pope believes atheists are going to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's sad. Read the mm -hmm. Bible. That's it. Yeah. You've got to rely on the word. Yeah. Is it possible some people will get out of hell after serving a period? No. Again, hell is for eternity. I'll tell you what's tragic to me. It's not just the Pope who mm -hmm. has problems. I used to be an ELCA Lutheran, and you did too once upon a time. We, my congregation left that denomination because it's not liberal. It's gone bonkers radical. Mm -hmm. The head bishop of the ELCA Lutheran Church was asked by a Chicago reporter, Bishop Eaton, is there a hell? Her response, there may be, but I think it's empty. And her view is, everybody ends up in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, has she read Matthew 25? Mm -hmm. If you count the verses, I believe Jesus talks more about hell than he does about heaven. Mm -hmm. So out of love, we need to maintain what the scripture says, because some of these religious leaders are leading people over the cliff. How do they think they can change the word of God? Uh, yeah, isn't that rather arrogant? It is. Yeah. What do I say to someone on their deathbed to help them go to heaven? Um, you, again, you, you bring up the two basics. 1 Corinthians 15, Christ died for your sins, rose from the dead. Don't bring up Adam and Eve. Don't bring up Jonah and the fish. Don't bring up Noah and the ark. You go right to, you know, we're sinners. Christ died for your sins, he rose from the dead. Before you die, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus. Uh, would you like to put your trust in Christ? And if they've never been baptized, I'd run, get a little pan out of the sink and baptize the person. But believe in the Lord Jesus that he died for your sins, rose from the dead. We're saved by God's grace, not by being good enough because you'll never be good enough is by Christ that we're saved. So we don't have to have a pastor who could baptize no. at do, that point do in time? You, yeah, in, anyone can. In emergencies, Christians, anybody can baptize. Mm. Well, listen, I think that's uh, about it almost. We got one more minute, so there you go. And yeah, well, we'll just give people an update. Oh, thank, sure. thank you, Mona, for the questions. Thank you all for watching our program. If you want to watch this show again for free or any of our shows, right there, you go to pastorstudy.org. We are on the air because of your prayers and people generously giving so we can keep adding TV stations. If you'd like to support us, you can either do it at that website or you can see our address in just a minute where we'll be on the screen. So that's it for this time. Just thank you, everybody. Uh, and we will see you again the next time. But Mona, we got 35 seconds. You want to sing? I don't think they want to hear that. I'll sing. We just preached on Judgment Day. Was that this one? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write The Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.